Hi, I'm Chef Lynn. Welcome to the Flavor Secrets Kitchen. Today I have a buddy here. This is Joan Donnay, who is the chef and owner of Essence on Main in Clarkston. Yes. Clarkston is in the boonies, right? Well, it's just a little further north. We're getting closer to uh, rural living, but uh, we're still kind of citified. Okay. Well, Joan and I were actually culinary students together, so we go back a long way. Yes. And today we're going to make a really easy, healthy meal for you. Joan will make a, a baked chicken breast. Tell us about your menu. Well, basically, I, I wanted to do something that kind of incorporates the seasonality of some of the foods that we're dealing with right now and the simple chicken breast. So chicken, I think, is our go-to protein for the most part. Right. So just a real simple application of putting that guy, you know, with a little salt and pepper into the oven and letting him cook. But we're also going to be cooking a um, garlic scape pesto, which is something that is kind of fun and unique. It's one of those things that you probably aren't really familiar with, so we'll explain a little bit about we'll what this guy is. We'll talk a lot about is. that, I think. Yes. Yeah, I love it. And then we're going to be making um, a side dish with kale, which kind of is the green of the moment. It's got a great uh, amount of iron and vitamins, and it just seems to be the one that most people are going to now, and it's more prevalent and available. And as, as we finish up here, Lynn, of course, is going to be making her yummy risotto. Can't wait. It's so long. <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing we were going to be doing is making a balsamic syrup reduction and kind of drizzling it over some lovely fresh strawberries and some ice cream. Okay, so, so I think you're going to love this meal. You can make it very quickly. And we'll start, as Joan said, with the risotto. I have here two cups of arborio rice. Make sure you get arborio rice. I don't right. where'd the package go. Oh, here's right one type. There are lots of different types of arborio, but if you don't get this kind of rice, it won't work right. Okay, so just trust me on that one. You I've got some cream. hot oil here, and I've washed this rice already. Rinsed it three times to get all the caulk out. And now I'm just going to put this in here and stir it around for a little while until it's hot, and then start adding chicken stock in the background while Joan tells us starts our regular meal. How about my process here? Alrighty. Um, I've chosen a, uh, a split chicken breast and I prefer to have the bone in and the skin on. Why Just, is that? Well, because I think it helps to keep the flavor kind of encapsulated within the bird itself. The bone helps to keep it um, kind of juicier and more moist. Okay. And the, this little topping or this little blankie that's on the outside kind of keeps it all encased. So I think that the chicken tends to be more juicy and um, not to flavorful. mention a little bit of fat in the skin that uh, always might helps come yes. out. <laughs> one of fat our, is flavor, right? That is one of our Don't favorite forget. chefs always said fat is flavor. Um, so that's one thing that we want to make sure that we kind of keep it closed in. I know a lot of you at home probably have the boneless, skinless chicken breasts. You can still do the same kind of application. Um, you'll probably just need to make sure that you kind of keep it covered so you can maintain that little that moisture that you wouldn't have without having skin on. So what I'm going to do in my little dish here is I'm going to put some slices of onion and I just have just a, a basic, actually this one's a Vidalia, but you just want some onion rings sliced up, kind of decorating the bottom of the pan. For me it just kind of helps keep the chicken off the bottom of the pan so it doesn't end up uh, cooking too too much and getting stuck. Do you stuck. think it imparts flavor to the chicken too? I think it does too. And okay. it, it, sometimes with, when the oven is at that right temperature it will caramelize a little bit and um, so you can also make this a little bit of a sauce when you're when all is said and done. And can you eat those onions when you're done? Oh yes! Oh, yeah. Nothing better than a cooked onion, nice and sweet. You so know I always say, um, people say when you're trying to sell your house, you should make an apple pie. Right. But I don't agree, I think you should fry onions. Onions? Whenever I only have simple yes. onions frying and someone walks in the front door, they're like, oh, it smells so good. I know. And you so feel go with the home. onions. I agree. Alright, so I have a little bit of olive oil that I'm just rubbing on the skin, a generous amount of salt, and a smattering of pepper, and uh, looks like Lynn's got some lovely little pepper flakes in here as well. So yeah, that's those be really are um, those are mixed pepper flakes. I okay. like the Lowry's kind. Okay. And I always use those just for a little bit of difference in color. Makes Good. It look pretty. It does make it look pretty, and it's kind of you know they're easier to find that way too. So you got a little bit of color. We're ready to put this in the oven. I'm putting it at 375. It will probably be 20, 25 minutes, and we'll check it. Okay. Let me run that over. All right, my dear. I will wash my hands up really quick. So our chicken's in the oven cooking now. That'll take probably about 20 minutes 20 or so. 20 minutes or mm -hmm. so. Okay, let's take a look at this risotto now. You can see that it's starting to soften just a little bit. And I'm putting this chicken broth in every time it gets dry. Just maybe a half a cup to a cup of chicken broth. I like this kind of chicken broth. To me, it's the most flavorful. I see you have a different kind. But I that's have a different okay. kind. It, it's what we what we sell at the stores. One of the one of our main brands. So I'm always looking for organic. So uh -huh. it's okay. one of the things that that we do. 
Um, but I know that one is also very, very good. And okay. I can see it's kind of getting creamy. Some of that starch is coming out of the rice. and Right, that's a good point. That's the reason we make risotto this way, because we want to bring the starch out slowly. Mm -hmm. And it does take a while, but it's really worth it because it tastes so good. Gosh, it's so worth it. Now I want this dish to be a little bit yellow, so I'm going to put a pinch of saffron in there and the saffron will make it yellow. You don't have to use quite this much. This is some saffron that I brought back from China and it's kind of mild, so I'm going to use a big pinch of it. Normally you can use about half that amount if you, if you buy it in a store around here. Is there so, another alternative to that? Is turmeric one of those spices? Yeah, yeah. I, I say turmeric, one? you say okay. turmeric. <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> right, but absolutely, that's a good point. Okay. A teaspoon of turmeric would be great also if you want to turn it yellow. I'm balsamic. going to actually start the balsamic syrup. Um, basically I have just a balsamic vinegar and they come in a variety of different ages and, and grades, but um, what we're going to be doing is putting some heat on it and we're going to reduce all of the extra liquid out of it. We're trying to get it down to a more of a syrup consistency and it takes a little while. So since it's part of our dessert, we're going to start it early just so the timing of all of this will work out really well. So I probably have about a half a cup left in this lovely bottle and we're just going to put a little heat underneath it. Where shall I put that, Miss Lynn? If you move that, we okay. can put it right here. All right, perfect. And you can keep an eye on it. We'll keep an eye I on it. I know when you're talking, it's kind of hard to keep an eye on everything, but well, with two of us, maybe we can remember. <laughs> maybe one of us will Do you be want there. it on medium heat? Um, we'll start off really, really slow and see what happens. On low. If you okay. get to the point where it's not reducing enough, you can always turn the heat up, but make sure you're babysitting it at that point. Lynn and I had talked earlier about the fact that I think one of the home cook's challenges is to make sure that when you have a meal, that you get it all out on the plate at the same time and have it all ready. So that's why we're starting the risotto. It takes a long time. We're starting the balsamic reduction. It takes a while. And right now I'm going to go into making my garlic scape pesto. And this is kind of a, it's kind of a unique thing. And I, a lot of the cooking that I do is based upon what we grow on our own property. Um, and also, uh, I like to cook seasonally. One Whoa, of our... you grow on your own property. Oh, yes, you yes. farm? I, well, I actually live a little further north of, of Clarkston. We have uh, seven and a half acres, and we've decided to do uh, a little bit of gentleman farming, according to my husband. It's something... Does that mean you weed or he weeds or well, somebody else weeds? <laughs> we have four children. <laughs> And I think sometimes that's why we decided to have so many, so they could do all of those chores for us. Um, but no, actually, um, <laughs> we kind of tend to weed ourselves. I was a little late on that one. Yeah, lap. yeah. Um, the garlic scape is actually a, an outgrowth of an actual garlic when it grows in the ground. Typically, garlics, a, as we know them, you know, they come in these lovely white little clumps, kind of a tissuey paper on the outside, and each individual clove. Um, imparts, you know, lovely flavors to all of your dishes. Well, while that clove is growing into a large bulb underground, it actually shoots up what's called a garlic scape. And these um, come out of typically just hard neck garlics, which, I mean, is a whole lesson in and of itself. So this whole thing is called a scape or just this end? This whole thing is called a scape. And it's really quite firm. It's rather rigid. And up here at the top, you see these little, little pods. And they refer to this as the blossom, but it's not actually a flower at all. What ends up happening, if you leave them on long enough, is they actually turn into little seeds. And if you can see these, these are actually like baby garlic. And you can plant these seeds. It'll take you two years to get a head of garlic out of it, but that is probably how it's become uh, so prolific throughout the Can you the eat those? Well, you can eat them. Um, are they good? Have you eaten them? No. I, they're, they're just a little too tough and everything. They've got all of the little you know, components to actually grow and become a big daddy garlic, so mm -hmm. um, we kind of we kind of let them be. One of the reasons that we do cut these off is so that all of the energy goes to the actual bulb in the ground, and then you have a much more productive um, prop when it comes to actually pulling the garlic out. So one thing I really like about those is they make they're really great in edible flower arrangements. Oh my gosh! You know, they really look yeah. cool. If yeah. You, if you add some nasturtium or something else that you can oh, eat, yeah. and then your whole centerpiece is edible. That's a great idea. I hadn't really thought about them in terms of that, but when I brought in this bunch today, it did look rather like a like a bouquet, a very unique bouquet, but a bouquet <laughs> nonetheless. I would love it just like that. I know. I would. I do a lot of decorating with herbs at home. I will find that I have a vase full of parsley. And it's not just one of those cooking show parsley. things. You just kind of pull them off and work with them. But um, uh -huh. the, you can do the same thing with these as well. Sure. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be cutting off the parts that we aren't going to be using. And we aren't going to be using the flower portion. The flower portion. And then we're just going to take this. I, I know. I want to use the flower portion. Poor little guy. Maybe. Well, I no. That's a whole other segment. Okay. We won't. <laughs> 
pardon me. You yeah, don't want to go right on. Go right on. Never mind. <laughs> um, what we're going to do is just kind of take a, a handful of these. We're trimming off the little baldy part, and we're going to slice them into little small segments. We're going to be using the food processor to actually make this pesto, so um, it's going to do a lot of the work for me. So I won't have to worry too much about. Um, just like your kids. Yes. Yes, my new child. I'm going to put this on their Facebook links. <laughs> yeah, you know, they laugh. They actually have all become rather competent cooks over the years. I, I was, bet. I was concerned that uh, my culinary training would uh, kind of, you know, intimidate them in terms of cooking. But no, they, they all cook rather fearlessly, and I'm actually quite proud of them. They That's do great. a really good job of just pairing flavors and cooking fresh. We do a lot of fresh cooking because we grow a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So... It ends up being um, so. Do you a sell those treat. things in the store? What kinds of things do you sell in the store? Well, a lot of we don't do a lot of produce in the store. Um, we primarily do a lot of uh, specialty foods, gourmet foods, some you know organic things. Um, we don't have a lot of fresh produce. We use an awful lot of fresh produce because we prepare our own salads back in our um, our kitchen. We have kind of a deli thing and. Um, so all of our salads are whole grain based and you know lots of fresh onions, lots of fresh um, garlic, lots of uh, peppers and things like that. But um, so I, you have dishes that you can pick up for lunch or dinner? Yeah, we have and a little to-go thing. you also do cooking classes, right? I do cooking at classes. Essence on Main and I do, I do. All right, so basically I'm working on getting a whole cup of these garlic scapes in here. If I can stop talking long enough to do that. Um, I think we're okay. It, like I said, because we're processing it, we don't really have to be concerned about the size of it because we'll go ahead and, and uh, turn it into a delightful mush. Um, typically, when you're making pesto, you're using basil Del leaves. <laughs> that delightful mush. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we'll have to taste it, and you will agree. All right, I'm All sure right. I will agree. Now, uh, I do need to have Parmesan cheese. Smells good. Doesn't it smell good? The nice thing about these is they do impart garlic flavor. They smell, I mean, they certainly smell like garlic. They're a little more tender than um, like, a bul like a bulb of garlic or a clove of garlic, at least, um, you know, when they're younger like this. And they are uh, fresher tasting and not quite as pungent. A lot of times the garlic bulbs themselves tend to be a little more peppery or hot when you, you know, not that you want to eat one raw, but these you can definitely eat raw and still get the, the lovely flavor without it uh, burning the back oh, of your that's throat. that's a cool thing to know. Yes. And we had mentioned that uh, basil is typically your, your pesto foundation, but we're doing it with garlic scape. So it's also a little bit of walnuts, and that's actually a third of a cup that we're gonna add. One cup of scapes, a third of a cup mm, of walnuts. Yummy. And we're gonna throw in our Parmesan cheese. Oh, can you make me some extra? I need Ooh, some for the risotto. Oh, indeed, I'm very good at this. <laughs> I can see that. Uh, yes, I'm a queen shredder. So um, how much do you think you need, my uh, dear? Three tablespoons. Oh, that's good. Just a little bit. Just a few more. <clears throat> more of these okay good um well i think That's i got you perfect. too I, i'll actually here no i feel okay. i'm feeling generous all right i'll go ahead and do that <gasps> hi sweetie len len has a very lovely home and she has darling little doggies that kind of float around it kind of reminds me of <laughs> it's it's more comforting i think to cook when you have your family and your your pets around but actually for me my my pets are family too so it's nice to see Whenever your little babies. Whenever there's food, they seem to saunter under the table over there. And <laughs> that's we, okay. We, we used like to have them. a we used to have a glass top table at home, and the kids would tease the dog. It was really cruel because Aww. the dog would sit under the table, and Kiss then again. <laughs> you're going to be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> they would hold it over the glass. Yeah, and they'd so move the dog, it, so the dog would be like, "Oh Aww. my God, that's terrible." It, well, it was kind of funny. This okay, so perfect. now we just need to process the. We need to throw a little olive oil in there. Okay. I'm going to do a little bit of like a half a teaspoon of salt. So sprinkle it in there. And one of the things about the garlic scapes, a little tiny bit of pepper, is the garlic scapes are really vibrant and green mm -hmm. and lovely. So we're going to add a, several glugs of olive oil here. Okay. Really, is that about a standard accepted abbreviation of glug? Don't you think? <laughs> if you see a G in a recipe, <laughs> yes. it means glug. It's not grams, it's actually glugs. I guess it depends on whether it's a liquid it's a or a solid. It's actually three fourths of a cup, so I'm pretty much emptying your lovely bottle here. Okay. <laughs> Actually, if you want to put it all in there, you can pull the stopper out and imagine that. Throw it all in. Oh, well, I probably won't eat all of that. Artsy olive oil. It's lovely. Container. Is it like MoMA? Is it like the Modern Museum of Art? Yeah, actually, in Toronto. It's so lovely. And I think that's one of the. I use olive oil all the time, and I think it's important to have something lovely on the counter mm -hmm. to kind of assist you in feeling like every day is a holiday when you're cooking. <laughs> every single day. Now I'm going to do just a little splash of lemon juice. 
and there's nothing, you know, particular about this, just a little squeeze in there. Be careful not to get the seeds in. If you do, though, the processor should blend it up really well. <laughs> <laughs> blend it up really That's well. That's our hope. Did you get any seeds? Okay, I no, don't think it looks I all did. right. I don't think I did. So I use a little sieve when I do that. Oh, uh, yeah, that I makes sense, too. A little too. small sieve. All right, so did I do that correctly, miss? You did. All right, here we go. There's some serious blending going on. It really doesn't take very long. If you're looking for it, I'm sorry. If you're looking for it, blah, blah, blah. You're looking for it to just kind of incorporate. You want it to be a little bit, a little bit smooth, so we might want to just scrape down the sides every now and then. Felt like a dental assistant there. <laughs> your spatula. Well, when you're scraping things, I think that that's appropriate. Mm -hmm. Appropriate analogy. Scrape, scrape, scrape. P.S. This is a heat-proof spatula that I'm using for the risotto. You can't saute with just any old spatula or it'll melt. Right. So make sure it's heat-proof. Yes, definitely. Heat-proof spatulas always have a red handle, but all red-handled spatulas are not heat-proof. Yes, yeah, so beware. <laughs> so beware. <laughs> if you melt it in your risotto, you might want to start over. Yeah, and I think it does it say, it, it, typically they'll say something on there about the temperature. Yeah, Rubbermaid is all I see. Yeah, but there's numbers on the back. This is an old one. Oh, this is nineteen. Oh, it's got a little, um, oh, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Anyway. <laughs> Might be the year. <laughs> it's well loved. All right. So. Oh. A little more. There we go. There we go. So here we go. I think we are good. It's a little, little chunky. This and that's boiling. okay. Is it, is it we supposed to boil? We could probably reduce it down okay. temperature wise. All right. So we still have some time for it to do okay. its thing. So this is what you're looking for. Now this this is good just like spreading it on anything, chips, a dip. Um, mm. But today when the, the chicken is done mm. and, and out of the hopper over there, we're gonna just put a little bit of that on there. You wanna try that? I do. Oh my God. Mm. Really good. Delicious. It is very good. Totally delicious. Very mm. fresh. So Great idea. We will put this okay. aside. We'll put this aside and it's probably just about time for the chicken to come out. And so I'll head over there and get it. That sounds See great. in a minute. So it looks like our balsamic is all reduced now. What would you say? It's maybe half what we had before? Half. Yes. So now I'll just set that behind. That can wait. Bring out another pan here and Joan will show us how to make some braised kale. The kale is, as I said earlier, it's one of the uh, leafy greens that I think a lot of people are using now. And you can find it at some of the warehouse stores in really large bags. Mm -hmm. Good vitamins. Or most markets. Yes. Now, right now you right. can find kale. This, um, I picked this this morning. Did you grow it? We grew it, All yes. Right. We actually have a hoop house on the property, so it's our way of trying to keep a the what deer. House? Hoop house? Who house? Uh, <laughs> hoop house? Hoop house? Like an owl? Hoop as in, hoop, oh, hoop as in hula. Hoop. Yes, it's a hoop house, and it actually okay. is um, a tubular structure with uh, plastic over it. Kind of awesome. looks like a greenhouse. Oh, you have to go take some pictures of that. That it, I mean, it's really quite fun to have to have that. It's really hot in there, so um, oh, I don't spend a lot of time in there in the afternoon. But we grow these in there keeps them away from the deer, which is a nice thing. Right. Um, but we do have situations with bunnies in there. Mm -hmm. But the bunnies have left my kale alone, loving the spinach they are. <laughs> um, but what, you, what you'll do is you, when you have the kale, you, you want to remove the stem. Um, it's just a little too firm to cook with, and it easily, you can see that the greens peel right off. So can you put that out there to divert the animals, or <laughs> would you kind of stand them up like a fence? Because <laughs> they're very, very rigid and strong. Um, kale also makes a really nice salad green. A lot of times the larger ones like this are a little more more tough, but um, when you when you can buy it in smaller little pieces, which I did have one here earlier, um, they're That's more okay. tender. <laughs> <laughs> they're more tender. They're more all tender. Right. All right. So I did that. I peeled them off, and all all you do is kind of roll them up a little bit, and then run a knife through them. Slice right through them. Okay. Nice and easy. So we're going to put a little fire under the pan, and it's a braise, which is you know like low and slow cooking with uh, with moisture. Um, that we learned in school. Yeah. But I'm also going to actually start it with a bit of a saute. So it's kind of a combination of techniques for me. Braising is great for anything tough, right? Yes. Indeed. Which they are. <laughs> they <laughs> tend to be. Um, if you can get now, I mean, you can get kale in the in the market right now. Farmers markets are a great place to get it as well. But it actually gets more sweeter after the first frost, so it's really more of like a fall crop. Oh. So if you uh, if you have a farmer that you they deal with after you know like in the fall, it Try really ends up being nice. Get that kale like in November. Yes, yes, and it's pretty hardy too, so it will stand up. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going ahead, putting that in there. 
I will sprinkle a little bit of salt on there. I find, and I think we were told too, that when you have salt on your veggies, it helps them to release some of their liquid. Right. So Plus, it makes them taste good. I love Two salt. Two things that spike up flavor <laughs> are salt and lemon, as you've heard many times here before. You, the only way you can tell if risotto is done is if you taste it. You want it to not stick to that back molar. As soon as it does, I think it's done. Now, risotto is a problem if you have to make it to please someone because everyone likes it a little differently. How do you like yours? Do you I like, like it. it. I like a little bit of bite to it. A so little bit of bite to it. I think it's it. perfect. So that's exactly. It took mm -hmm. about 20 minutes to make. It doesn't have to take a long time. If you keep your heat up high enough, it can cook very quickly. And to finish it is very easy. All I have to do is I'm going to throw a couple tablespoons of butter on there. Real butter. Real butter. Real and butter. <laughs> please. <laughs> and by the way, this is a great use of fat. You know, we need a little bit of fat in our diets, but if you cook with fat, it, you, your, your, you, your dish can get greasy, right? Right. But if you add it at the end, then when you taste your dish, it's very forward on your tongue, and it'll, it'll feel really rich and delicious. Then I'm adding, how much Parmesan did you give me? Some uh, shredded Parmesan? I was hoping I gave you three tablespoons. Okay, we're guessing, three <laughs> tablespoons. You can use more if you like it. When it comes to Parmesan, for me, a little bit is great, a lot is better. Yes, I agree. So you certainly could put more. And then to finish it off, I have some blanched asparagus here. I'm just going to put that, work that through it a little bit. And then when we're finished, I'll save a little bit for garnish. Oh, can and you put just about any veggie in there? You Would can. You? you can use any kind of vegetable. If it's in pieces or chunks, then you should make sure it's cooked before you add it because you just add it at the end and it doesn't have any time to cook. But if you use something grated, like we on this show one time we did carrot, grated okay. carrot, that you can just add in at the end and it cooks immediately. So oh, this is nice. great looking. And then one more thing, just I'll add, I'll sprinkle on just a little bit of salt. I can grab some from over here, mm -hmm. just maybe a quarter of a teaspoon of salt for this rice. And then a half a teaspoon of this great mixed pepper. And stir it through and our risotto is ready. Now I can leave this sitting here. I turned the heat off, but I can either put a, depending on how long I want it to sit, I can put a cover on it and leave it sit, or I can leave it on a low, low flame as long as I watch it for 15 or 20 minutes. It's not a problem, it won't overcook. All right, let me take a peek at this really quick, stir it up. If it tends to get a little more dried out, go ahead and add just a, a little bit more of that yeah, stock. Yeah, keep an eye on that because that's something that could easily burn. In yeah. fact, we probably want to turn our heat down yeah. now, right? we want a little bit lower heat. Okay, so now the heat's on low. So we'll just and finish actually, it we off and we can probably our, turn it off. Turn our heat off mm -hmm. and let that sit there too while we go get our chicken. So here's our chicken all done, and those onions look fabulous. I could just eat those onions. They look yummy. I've yummy. got a thermometer in here, and we took it to 165, right? Mm -hmm. to, just to make sure that our chicken is safe and finished. Okay, so you're right. slicing up these strawberries. Strawberries are for the last part of the components here, the, we'll just the dirt. Just take off. The, what do you think of those little strawberry hullers you can buy in you the stores? You know, they're probably really handy, but one thing I remember from culinary school is the fewer tools that you have, the better, and uh, I have found that knives... As long as you can get equal results, right? Yes, equal results. And of course, we don't want to waste anything, so we're going to slice up as much as we can. I tried to save as much at the top as I could, but just a nice simple slice here, a handful of berries, and what we're going to do is kind of macerate throw them. Throw them in the bowl. Just throw them in the bowl. <laughs> oh, actually, yes, Lynn had set out this lovely tool for me, which is another tool that I do enjoy using, and uh, oh, I'm sorry. I will go ahead and just do a handful of these. It's not perfect if you worry about them being perfect. You just won't enjoy your meal as much. We're just slicing them. Oh, that's probably good that's for one good person, quantity. right? That's plenty for one person. We're going to sprinkle it with just a little bit of sugar. The sugar is going to help um, to kind of bring out the sweetness of the berry. Well, it's going to add Depending to the sweetness of the berry. Depending on how sweet your berries are, though, you might not even need sugar, that's right? True. Or if you have wild strawberries. That's true. So wild strawberries, when they're smaller, too, you uh -huh. wouldn't really need to actually cut them up. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Okay. All right. So we're done with the berries, letting them sit to the side there Here's for a our, moment. I don't know where our tongs went, but we'll just use this for now to get this chicken over here for you. All right. It's a little bit hot. Go ahead. You see those lovely onions? That would always mm. be a nice addition to the dish. Right. You just go ahead and put those on the plate as well. Who needs pesto? <laughs> That's right. Let's skip that segment. <laughs> So all I'm going to be doing here is, is taking the, the chicken meat off of the bone. That'll just be easier for your, your guests to eat, your family to eat, for you to eat. And uh, hot. So you're slicing from the V end down. Yes. And holding your knife against the bone, I can see. Yes, thank you. At an angle against the bone. 
That's right. As we were doing As we were taught. As we were taught. As we were taught. Sometimes your chicken is cooked so well you can actually pull the, the chicken from, from the bone itself. If you need a little reinforcement here, there, your knife should, should right. be nice and handy and do that job for you. So as you can see, it's nicely cooked, no pink remaining, nice and steamy, lots of juice here on the, the tray. So, ah, yes. so there juicy is our... Because it wasn't overcooked, if right. you keep a thermometer or if you check your chicken with a thermometer, you can take it out at 165 or you can even take it out a few degrees before that, then let it sit and it will its temperature will rise due to carryover cooking. Yes. So that's the biggest mistake people make with chicken and fish is overcooking. Right. All right, let's get this plated up. Okay, so now we have all of our components. Let's make a dish fit for a queen. Excellent, we're ready to go. Well, first of all, let's put the chicken on there. And I do want to use these caramelized onions. You can see we got some nice color on those from mm, being in the oven. Delicious. And slide this lovely piece of breast meat on top. Are you gonna leave the skin on there? Well, you know, some people like the skin and some people don't. I'm a, I'm a not liker, but... Okay. Um, I, I think it's it does pretty. Look beautiful, it's right? Very they can take lovely. their own skin off, right? They can, indeed. <laughs> okay. My mother would enjoy that very much. She's a chicken skin person, but uh, okay. not quite me. So then let's add a scoop of risotto here. I like to use a scoop, so I give everybody the same amount. I used kind of long pieces of asparagus here. It's a beautifully large scoop. And That's... then we're going to just garnish it a little bit with some extra asparagus. The asparagus was sitting around a little bit, so I just put a tiny little bit of olive oil on it using a pastry brush to spike it up and make it look moist and delicious. Nice and glossy. All right, the last component <laughs> we're putting here is the kale. And actually, before I put that in there, I'm going to squeeze just a little bit of the lemon juice on there. There's a nice quantity of iron in kale in terms of nutrition. And mm -hmm. if you add just a little bit of a citric acid to it, it will help make that iron a little more available That's to you. a nice big dose of there kale. You there you go. Love it. All right. Great. So, so we've got, got some that. nice color going on here too. Lots of green, the golden chicken, and the golden saff. Um, what is that stuff? Oh, risotto. The risotto. I started to say saffron. <laughs> the it golden saffron, saffron, saffron risotto. Saffron risotto. And there's your fabulous pesto. And there's mm. a little bit of pesto. You could actually dip just about that anything in there. Is seriously good. That there pesto. Go. I love it. Okay. Now we've got a dessert also. All right. Very quickly, with the berries, we're going to just scoop out some vanilla ice cream. What kind this, of ice cream have you got? There? This actually is a coconut milk ice cream, which mm -hmm. is really delicious. We have a lot of people that come to our store with food sensitivities, okay. dairy sensitivities, gluten sensitivities, and one of the things that we can cater to is uh, special special dietary needs. Mm -hmm. So I use a coconut milk ice cream here, those lovely strawberries, and then our reduction of balsamic vinegar, mm -hmm. which is you would think an interesting combination and you wouldn't be sure that you'd like it, but I guarantee you the balsamic and the strawberry is fabulous. It looks like syrup because you reduced it so beautifully. Yes, so there's that. We can add a little smattering of almond slices if you choose and... There you go. A beautiful summer meal straight from the garden. Straight from the garden. With things that are in season right now, your family will love it and it's really a, an incredibly nutritious meal too. So give it a try at home. I'm Chef Lynn. Enjoy.